For those of you who haven't joined us before, a very warm Bilson welcome to you. And I hope you have a blessed day and you'll be blessed with um, the service today. Um, can I just say we'll begin our service with hymn number 359, Hark the Voice of the Lord is Calling. Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. The speaker of the hour has chosen verses from 2 Corinthians 9 and 10 verses. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distress, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am I strong. At this time, can we just bow our heads where we are, as we, in our, in our hearts, we will be praying and asking the Lord to guide us, to speak to us, and for the minister who will be speaking to us too. So I will be praying, but I need you to be pray within yourself and for the Lord to remove any cobwebs that might be there so that our mind will be fitting to listen to his word and to take it through the coming weeks. Let's bow our heads. Loving, kind, kind, and loving. We give you thanks and we give you praise because you have brought us through difficult times. Many of us may not have been helped, but Lord, it has been challenging indoors as well as outdoors. Many of us may not have gone to work, but Father, we know we feel it too. And so Father, we invite you in our hearts to remove whatever it is that is there right now that is floating around that is preventing us to feel that you're with us. And so, Father, we ask that as we listen to you at this very moment, that we can hear your voice in our hearts. We ask, Father, that you will forgive each and every one of us where we have sinned. We know our condition. We know how far we are away from you. We know the efforts that we are making too are, 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 not, are not making. And so, Father, we want to invite you in our hearts and in our midst at this time so that you can give us the comfort, you can give us the directions that we need so that when you shall come in your glory, none of us will be left out. And so, Lord, we think of our young people at this time. We ask that you will guide them. You know the things that they've got on their mind. You know the things that are important to them. You know what they're experiencing with their friends of peer pressure or wherever the pressure is coming from. We ask, loving Father, that you will touch them and that they will realize that you love them and that you care for them and that there's things that you want to do for them that they are not aware of. We also ask that you be with the parents and that you will guide them too. Give them strength. Give them the ability to know your voice and to listen to it. Be with our elderly members and those who are sick. Many have been open for healing a long time ago, and it seems that to be coming in their directions. But Father, we ask that you will help them to hold on 
because sometimes, Father, it is not you who do not want to heal us and to give us good things, but because of our own concept and our own belief system. And so, Father, we ask that you will help us to come to you and to surrender and to listen. We also ask that you be with our leaders in the church and in our community too. Help us, Father, to be able to listen to you and what you have to say and to do things your way. We know if you are there with us, we are able to overcome all the difficulties. And so, Lord, we want to leave each one in your hands. We ask that you be with our congregation here. We ask that you will bless us, that you will grant to us the things that we want. And most of all, Father, help us to understand you and come to know you more. We also present the speaker for today. You know him. You even knew him before he was born. And so, Lord, we leave him in your hands, knowing that you are able a word in his mouth so that he can speak to give us the assurances that we need to take us through the coming weeks and months ahead. And so, Father God, we ask that you will forgive us and that you will hear our prayers today, for we ask it all in Jesus' name. Good, good afternoon, church members. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm extremely happy to introduce our speaker, Edler Suresh from uh, Sutton Coldfield Church. He's uh, not known, uh, new to us. He visited mm -hmm. our church several times. Yeah. And he, at present, he is working as an elder in a Sutton Coldfield Church. Man. I gave him a short notice to speak in Bilston Church today divine service but gladly he had accepted our invitation and uh, he said hey, he will come and worship with us today i hope and pray the message that he prepared is a blessing to each and every one of us to our Bilston church happy sabbath and uh, good afternoon everyone good afternoon I want to thank God sincerely for this wonderful opportunity. I'm truly delighted. My heart is filled with joy and happiness to stand before the Lord, sharing his witness. I want to thank uh, Elder Solomon for giving uh, such a huge opportunity to speak to Bilston Church. And I want to thank the pastor and the elders too who supported in uh, helping me to have this opportunity. And I do thank uh, Amu for that beautiful song, for singing and giving a lot of strength for me, for my message. And before I could go any further, let's all bow our heads for asking the Lord in Holy Spirit guidance. Our kind and merciful Father which art in heaven, we thank you for the wonderful time, Lord. Thank you for calling us. And as I stand today to share the witness, Lord, touch my lips, Anoint me, Lord, so that I can only speak the truth, Lord. Whatever I speak today, everything may come only from your throne of grace. Uplift me, Lord, and bless each one of us as we all going to witness this testimony. These few blessings I pray in Jesus' name. Now, before I could go for my message, I request my both daughters, Alina and Ila, to sing a special song for each one of us. Happy Sabbath, everyone. It's so nice to see each one of you. Um, I know it's such a hard time now with the lockdown, but I hope each one of you are safe. And we really do miss the Bilston Church. You're very close to our heart because it was my first church and we all used to attend there. Um, so we always pray for you. And mm. we're gonna be singing a special song and the song is called, Lord, I offer my life to you.
Once again, I want to thank God for giving this wonderful opportunity to share His Word, and I thank Alina and Anila for the lovely song rendered before the message. So the title for my devotion this afternoon is "Raised Through His Grace." Raised through His Grace. Often we start this journey called Christianity with zeal, like. metal hungry sprinters fueled by our passion for god we dedicate our hearts to jesus longing only for his glory our hearts beat with whole hearted devotion to god we only want to serve him no matter whatever the challenges we face so most of us are in the race we think as christians as believers we think we are in the race but some of us they already lost the track they are out of track some of us we don't know our destination destination we are just running a race some of us even though we stumble we get up we come back to the track and we will start our race our race is eternity and there are some of us quite few few we have a goal we have a vision we want that eternity we keep on running on the track so i just wanted to give a couple of illustration this afternoon hudson taylor from barnsley england at the age of 17 he had a passion to do god's work he want to be in the race for the eternal home he decided let me go to china and do god's work because he discovered china is the place where there is a lot of god's ministry need to be done so as i mentioned at the age of 17 he went to china he started doing god's work so he completed a couple of years there and he did lot of conversions he gave lot of baptism at the later stage after a couple of years he discovered himself he need more people to do god's work then he thought he by staying alone 
he may not able to do God's work extensively, he decided, let, let me come back to England and find few more people, take them and try to do the work there in uh, China. So he just came after a couple of years from uh, China to England. And what he did was, he conducted some church meetings and he called the people, is there any volunteers you wanted to go and do God's work in China? I can always give a company and there's a lot of evangelism needed in China. So when he went to the first church, after the message he gave, he asked, is there anybody who are sitting here want, want to volunteer yourself and come with me to China to God's work? There is nobody who rose, rose their hand. He asked the second time and third time, and uh, apparently there was a hand rose up and said, yes, I want to go to China and I want to do God's work. And he called him, Hudson uh, Taylor called, please come, I need to say, because he wanted to come and do God's work. So uh, Hudson Taylor made this young man and say, I'm very sorry, you are not fit to go to China. You can't do God's work. This young man was discouraged. And there was a second church meeting he conducted, Hudson Taylor. And in the second meeting, and he again asked, is there anybody who wants to do God's work? And there is no hand has risen up. And he asked the second time, there is no hand. When he asked the third time, the same hand which rose in the first meeting again rose up. Yes, I wanted to go and do God's work in China. And uh, Hudson Taylor knew who this was and he ignored him. And there was a third church meeting. And after his sermon, again he asked, is there anybody who wanted to do God's work in China? There is no hand raisin. He asked three times. At the end of third time, there is a hand, the same hand it rose. And the fourth church, same thing happened. And the fifth church, he went and conducted the meeting, same thing has happened. Then he thought, okay, let me call this guy. He called. And you know the guy who came, his name is called George Stott. So George Stott is the person who rose the hand when he conducted the first meeting. He has a passion to do God's work in China. So he was speaking to uh, George Stott. I know you want to do God's work in China, but I can see you're only with one leg. You are not fit to work in, God, in China with one leg. Because the problem is in China, there are a lot of civil war is going on. There are communists. They don't uh, try to encourage people who try to do and do uh, go and do God's work. They try to trouble you. They try to mock you. How can you go and do the God's work there in China with one leg? And you know what this uh, guy has answered? George Stott. He said, sir, I know I have one leg, but I have been watching keenly when you gave admonition, when you gave a call, who wants to go to China? There is no hand raising up. I can see there are a lot of people with two legs, but nobody's coming to volunteer. Nobody's coming forward. But then I thought, even though with one leg, I have a passion. I want to run a race for God. Then I decided, let me go and do God's work. Then, you know, Edward Tyler, he said, yeah, I know you want to do God's work, but you know what is going to happen when people come in, all these people will come. You need to run away. You don't have leg. Even though I give you an artificial leg with two legs, it's very difficult for you to run away. This is what he said. And the answer for George Stott is, sir, I'm going all the way to China not to run away. I know God is going to deliver me. I'm going thousands of miles from England to China not to run away. I need to stand as a witness for God. I need to give testimony for God. If God wants to deliver, he will deliver me. But if God wants to uh, die, I'm ready to die. I lay my life. This is what is my attitude. And I can see there are a lot of people with two legs. They're very healthy. They're not at all 
uh, uh, disabled, they're physically fit, but nobody wants to go. So I want to take this opportunity, then I want to go. And then lo and behold, he got the opportunity. He went to China with the help of Edward Taylor. They've done extensively God's work. They've done a lot of evangelism. And you know, in the 19th century, there were almost 18,000 of conversions and people gave their hearts to God. It was said, this is the biggest evangelism ever took place after the evangelism of Apostle Paul in the history. So my dear friends, what I want to emphasize from this illustration is, we have a pair of hands, a pair of legs. We are healthy, but where are we? What are we doing? Are we doing God's work? Are we running the race? This is my question this afternoon. And let's see some of the examples in the Bible. There are so many people who want to run the race. We can see the example of Abraham, how we ran the race with the faith. We can see the race of David. David at point in his life, he stumbled, but he was back on the track and his race was fruitful. We saw how the race Moses has run. Initially, he was not confident, but God gave him a lot of uh, grace in his life. He started running the race. And ultimately, you know, he led the race so well and he uh, able to gain, uh, gain the crown of life. Likewise, if you look into the Bible, there are so many people. This afternoon, I want to ponder a few thoughts on one important character. His name is King Asa. King Asa, he is the king of Judah. I'm sure most of you have studied the life of King Asa. If you look into the Bible, if you turn uh, the Bible to uh, Second Chronicles verses chapter fourteen, verses one to four, four please. Second Chronicles chapter fourteen, verses one to four. You can see on the screen it says, "So Abijah slept with his father, and they buried him in the city of David. And Asa, his son, reigned." In his stead, in his days, the land was quite, quite ten years. And Asa did what was good in the sight of the eyes of the Lord, for he took away the altars of the strange gods and the high places, and broke down the images and cut down the graves, and commanded Judah to seek the Lord God of their fathers and to do the law and the commandment. So apparently, what happened was. King Asa, when he took the throne, he made all the people, all the uh, congregation, he gave the commandment of the Lord and he told them to seek the Lord with the whole hearted. He destroyed all the altars of the strange gods and he was very faithful. He started the race so well. So same way, when people in our Christianity, the believers, when we are given position, when we are given the power, when we are given the responsibility, we have the similar attitude. We want to run the race just like Asa, especially when the young children, when they take baptism, they have the passion to do God's work. Their hearts are delighted. They wholeheartedly wanted to seek the Lord in, in, uh, in the prayer, in the testimony, what they give. And that's what they start off. And let's see later what happened in Asa life. And Asa continued well. When we look into Second Chronicles, uh, verse 9, it says, And there came against them Zera the Ethiopian with a host of thousand, thousand, and three thousand chariots, and came unto Merissa to fight over Asa and the kingdom. You know what Asa has done? He has seeked the Lord for the help. If you look into verses 11 and 12, it says, And Asa cried out the Lord for the help and said, Lord, it is nothing with thee uh, to help, whether with the many or with them, that we have no power. Help us, O Lord God. We always want to rest in you. And in thy name we go against this multitude of God. Thou art our God, 
let no man prevail against thee. So the Lord smote the Ethiopians before Asa and before Judah, and the Ethiopians fled. So my friends, when there was a trouble, when there were enemies came and surrounded him, he asked God's help and God delivered. So Asa continued so well. And my dear friends, the same scenario, if you look into our lives, when we start our journey, the race, when you want to bear testimony for God, this is what we do. Couple of years, we are very strong in faith. We stand as a true witness. We do a lot of evangelism. We do, we want you to be kind to each one of us. You want to read the Bible. You want to share word of God. But later, what is our life? What is our destination that is so important? Let's compare the life of Asa in our lives too. So when we go into the later stage of uh, life, still we can see the God's guidance and blessings in Second Chronicles 15.4. But when they are in the trouble, as I mentioned, they asked God's help. He continued and there were high places. He still continued uh, destroying all the uh, idols and all the strange gods. And there was a peace on the land. It says Second Chronicles 15.9. And there was no more war unto the 5 and 35th year of Asa. Everything was fruitful because God intervenes and God's hand is there on the land because the king is so obedient. So, and it was on 36th year of Asa, we can see his downfall. What happened? In 2 Chronicles 16, 1, 3, we see in the 6th and uh, 36th years of reign of Asa, Basha, king of Israel, came up against Judah and built Rama to the intent that he might let none go or come into Asa, king of Judah. Then Asa brought out of silver and gold out of the treasures of the house of the Lord and of the uh, how king's house and sent to Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, that dwelt at Damascus, saying, There is a league between me and thee, and there was between my father and thy father. Behold, I have sent thee silver and gold. Break thy league with Basha, king of Israel, that he may depart from me. So look, my friends, my believers, believers, Asa, instead of going and asking God's help, he has gone and asked the help of a neighbor king. He offered a lot of silver and gold. He begged, you come and fight with me. You be my rescue. And see, the attitude has changed. All this while, throughout the 35th year, he was uh, trying to take help from God. He was trying to uh, beseek God's uh, faith. He's trying to uh, take God's love. But when it comes to 36th year, everything has changed. And instead of uh, uh, seeking God's help, he went and took the help of the neighbor's king. And this is what even we in our lives, we try to do. We will be strong in faith for a few years. And at times we try to stumble. This is what exactly happened in Asa's life. And you know what happened? Whenever we fall, whoever who wants to do God's work fall, God always sends a warning in form of a trial or a trouble or a warning. Whichever it is, God gives. He never wanted to leave us. But you know what happened in Asa's life? When God saw, instead of taking God's help, he went and took the help of uh, Ben-Hath king's uh, help. God was angry. He sent a warning through a prophet, uh, Hanan, Hanani, uh, to tell the mystic what he has done. So when you look into Second Chronicles 16, 7, 9 and 10, it says, And at the time Hanani, the prophet, came to Yesa, king of Judah, and said unto him, Because thou hast relied on the king of Syria, and not relied on the Lord God, therefore is the host of the king of Syria escaped out of thine hand, this is what he said. And he said in the ninth verse, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to shew himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. Herein 
thou hast done foolishly therefore from henceforth thou shall have wars then asa was very wroth with the prophet instead of giving heart to the lord back he was so angry unlike david when david has done the mistake prophet nathan came and told the mistake he has done he was immediate to react he gave heart to back to the lord he confessed his sin he prayed to god but asa did vice versa he was so angry with uh, this prophet uh, hanani he put him in the prison he did so evil thing for he was rage with him because the thing he didn't like what he said it didn't please his heart and you know what happened there was a destruction in the land and by looking in this scenario what happened later in the stage we can see when we read the book of chronicles especially chapter 15 and 16 and the later we can see asa was infected with a dreadful disease he got illness he was on the bed he, even when he was on the bed he never went and asked uh, god's healing on his life you know what he has done instead of going back to the lord he died with the illness look at the destiny look at the race he ran initially he was so good god was helping him god's hand was there on the land and it was peaceful and when he turned away from god there was a curse there was trouble on the land in spite of the prophet going and giving the warning he never turned his heart back he was never back on the track to run the race even there is a illness in his life he never went back but look at hezekiah what he has done if you look into second kings uh, 23 he, you know when there was a illness in hezekiah's life he prayed to god i beseech thee o lord remember now how how i walked before thee in the truth with a perfect heart and have done which is good in thy sight and hezekiah wept sore and god heard the prayer he extended his life span for 15 years unlike the prayer of asa who never asked pardon for his sins he never asked healing power for asa so what i wanted to draw lessons from the life of king asa is asa didn't finish well at all regardless of age ministry position or status we will leave this earth either as one who finishes well or as one who stumbles how can we finish well without whole hearted devotion to god how can we finish well without faith without his grace without his mercy don't forget god's god after a victory god gives lot of times victory in our lives when we are facing trial we go to god and god will give a victory when we have burdens when we have turmoil whenever we go god gives a victory same like in king asa life when he has troubles with the enemies he prayed god gave him victory but what happens perhaps asa has taken some of the credit for himself thinking somehow he had a hand in the victory perhaps he exchanged his longing for god's fame for a delight in his own uh, might perhaps in his pride he forgot god whatever contributed in his decision when he came in time of the face a powerful challenge he forgot god's past deliverance and acted out of fear this is what exactly we do in our lives we forget the blessings of god we often do the same mistake we repeated again and again we ask help from the uh, friends we ask the help from the pastor we have we ask the help from the elders rather than going the counsel of the god we will fail to forget the victory what god has given in our life so my admonition today is train for a long journey when we want to race and we need to participate in that race to attain the heavenly mercies you need to train for the long journey god wants you to be entirely his and this means that you have to watch you need to keep yourself fit it takes a tremendous amount of time and let's see uh, lng white writings 
when we see the writings uh, the book signs of the times it says the christians result many times they want to live faithful to god they want to be devoted but we need to get rid of all envy malice uh, all the evil thinking we need to have uh, courageous attitude we need to put away all the weight what we have and the selfishness we need to seek for his grace we need to seek for his eternal kingdom we need to love each one of us we need to love our enemies as well we need to be steady we need to be prepared ourselves not only physically spiritually we need to prepare mentally when we culture all this attitude then we'll be fit to be in the race and when we have the faith what abraham has showed we can always be on the track let's see the admonition what paul has given in second timothy 4:7 he says i have fought the good fight i have finished the race i have kept the faith so this is what we need to say we need to say yes i have fought a good fight yes i finished the race i have the kept the faith yes my crown is waiting and also he says in first corinthians 9:24 na chapter 9 verse 24 he say do you not know those who run in the race all the run but one receive at the price run in such a way that you may obtain it what you need to obtain you need to obtain that crown you need to obtain that mercy so my admonition to all the bilston church this afternoon do you want to run a race if you want to run a race you need to be right on the track look at the life of king asa initially he start off with a good pace but he lost control he was out of the track he never put him back in in the track right back he lost the eternity unlike what david has ran the race even though he was out of the track he came back and his race was fruitful and today my admonition admonition for each one of us if you want a crown of life we have a purpose on this earth god gave a mission for each one of us yes we need to run the race but we can run only with the grace without his grace the run we run it's only a race so i pray that may god give his grace so that our race on the earth is fruitful thank you all and god bless you benediction shall we close down our eyes for prayer a kind and merciful father which art in heaven thank you for being with us today with the entire service lord we can see your holy spirit guidance lord thank you for uplift, uplifting us with your message yes lord you want to be in that race for the eternal kingdom lord but what we run is only a race lord but if your grace is with us we can uh, inherit your kingdom lord i want to pray for the bilston family for all the children all the elders all the church members lord may you intervene in their lives lord strengthen them we are weak and feeble lord we are born in sin but with your grace we have been washed in precious blood of jesus christ lord help us to be loyal and faithful for you help us to be reminded of the mission and the purpose why we are living on this world lord help us to be a true witness for you help us to be a light shine so that we can glorify you with our works on this world lord not at this time we want you to be with the people around in the world who are suffering with this covid lord with the pandemic people have lost their lives people have lost their jobs people have lost their homes lord we want you to intervene in their lives give them the uh, protection give them the healing restore everything what they've lost lord you are the god you are the father whenever we call you you incline to uh, hear our prayers lord you your face will shine upon us whenever we call you lord may your grace may your mercy may your love always abound in our life so that our life on this earth will be finished lord continue to be with us bless us may your holy spirit uh, 
uh, stay with us uh, till the end of Jesus Christ's return, Lord, so that we will be always watchful and vigilant in doing your gospel work. Once again, take over all our iniquities, sinful nature, and uh, make us holy and help us to seek you diligently. These few blessings I pray in Jesus' name.